Two weeks ago I made a video about who would win in a fight between American animals and European animals. This was quite a strange topic to make a video on, but as you can see it got a lot more views than my regular videos. Of course I'm happy with this number of views, but I was a bit annoyed that it happened on this video. When I was making this video unfortunately I was very busy, and because of this I didn't have much time to get this video out. If I'm honest it was quite rushed, and this led to it being in my opinion one of my worst videos I've put out this year. I think some of you might have noticed this, and that's why it's one of my most disliked videos as well. Today I will be continuing this series, and hopefully this video will be a lot better than the last one. One last thing I would like to mention about the last video is the amount of complaints about the badger section. A lot of you seem to be unhappy with my scoring, but I'd actually like to stand by it. Lots of you were telling me how aggressive the American badgers can be, and the European badger would stand no chance. Although I might not have made it clear in the video, European badgers can be very aggressive too, and all you need to do is ask this cat who had an altercation with a European badger. There's lots of memes based on the appearances of these two badgers. But honestly, the European badger is a lot meaner than it looks. As well as this, the American badger is only two thirds the size of the European badger. So I stick with my decision that the European badger would win in a fight. And all of you who disagree can complain in the comments. <laughs> In today's video I will be going through 5 animals from Africa and 5 animals from Asia and I'll be trying to guess who would win in a fight. Of course this is my opinion and you can make your own opinions known in the comments. And to keep this series nice and controversial, today again I will be starting with two species of badger, the Japanese badger and the infamous honey badger. Now the Japanese badger is endemic to Japan and is found on most of the major islands apart from Hokkaido. Some of you may notice that they look very similar to European badgers, but they do have a slightly browner coloration and tend to be ever so slightly smaller. In Japanese their name translates to whole bear, which refers to both their appearance and their burrowing behaviour. The Japanese badger tends to be more solitary than the European badgers, and tend to hibernate during the coldest months of the year. These badgers are omnivorous, and the majority of their diet is made up by earthworms and insects, but they are also very fond of native fruits. Today this species is listed as least concerned, but their numbers have been affected by an American invader. Raccoons are an invasive species in Japan. They were first introduced into Japan after the success of a TV series called Rat called the raccoon. Many of these raccoons found their way into the wild and have had a negative effect on the ecosystem. But over in Africa there is another fearsome badger known as the honey badger. Although this badger can be found in some parts of Asia and the Middle East, it is most often associated with Africa. Despite its name the honey badger does not closely resemble other badgers and instead shares more similarities with weasels. It is primarily a carnivorous species and will eat almost anything it can find. One of its favourite foods is honey and also the larvae of African bees. This is how this creature goes got its name, and makes the honey badger sound like a very cute creature. This couldn't be further from the truth, because as I'm sure many of you know, they are extremely aggressive. They are known to fight hyenas, lions and leopards, but unfortunately sometimes they do fall prey to these predators. Their aggression is what most people know them for, but these mammals are also extremely intelligent. They are great at problem solving, and I went through their intelligence in one of my other videos about Stoffel the honey badger. This honey badger escaped from its enclosure multiple times, and even had to be hospitalised after taking on a lion. But if hypothetically these two creatures were to meet, who exactly would win in a fight? The Japanese badger has an average weight of around 7.5 kilograms and an average length of around 75 centimetres, whereas the honey badger has an average weight of around 12 kilograms and an average length of around 85 centimetres. For me this round is quite easy, as not only is the honey badger a lot larger, but it is also far more aggressive and intelligent. So even though the honey badger can be found in some parts of Asia, I'm going to score it 1-0 to Africa. But our next two species are both the African elephant and the Asian elephant. Now there are two living African elephant species, the African bush elephant and the African forest elephant. The African bush elephant tends to be a little larger and it's the species I will be focusing on in this video. The African bush elephant is the largest living terrestrial mammal and is distributed across 37 African countries. Unfortunately this animal is heavily affected by poaching and this has led to this species being listed as endangered. The most interesting part of elephants are their trunks. These trunks are extremely strong and flexible and contain around 150,000 muscles units. Elephants primarily feed on grasses, leaves and shrubs, and as these foods aren't that nutritious, some elephants have to eat up to 150 kilograms of food per day. As they are so large most predators don't tend to attack them, but some predators such as lions will go after their young. Luckily elephants are very caring and are quick to protect their young against predators. But of course Asia also has its own species of elephant, the Asian elephant. This species is the only member in its genus and is the largest land animal in its continent. One of the easiest ways to tell them apart from Africa 
African elephants is the fact that they have much smaller ears. Fewer numbers of Asian elephants also own tusks, and the percentage of males with ivory varies from just 5% in Sri Lanka to around 90% in southern India. This means that less poachers go after Asian elephants, but unfortunately they are also listed as endangered. But if these two elephants were to meet, who would win in a fight? Well, the African bush elephant is a little larger, with the average height of males being around 3.2 meters and the average weight of males being around 6 tons, compared to the Asian elephants 2.8 meters and 4 tons. Male African elephants tend to be very aggressive, and as they are so much larger, I think it's an easy decision. So for this round, it will be 2 0 to Africa. But our next two species are both the Siberian tiger and the African lion. Now, the Siberian tiger is the largest subspecies of tiger alive today and is most commonly found in Russia and some parts of northeastern China. This big cat used to have a much larger range, but due to poaching and habitat loss, their numbers are not as strong as they used to be. This tiger story isn't unique because there are both recently extinct tigers and tigers on the brink of extinction. It's tragic that these magnificent predators are struggling today, but hopefully this can be turned around in the future. Because the Siberian tiger can be found in some cold climates, it has a few adaptations that help it survive here. It's the only tiger species that can survive in the extreme cold and has developed a thick layer of fur and a thick layer of fat. Day to day they travel long distances in search of food and their prey can sometimes be animals as large as moose and brown bears. They are the apex predator in their native range but the same could also be said for another big cat, the African lion. Now nearly all wild lions live in Africa. This is apart from one small population that is found in a national park in western India. Of course there is a lot of sexual dimorphism with this big cat as males tend to be a lot larger and have a long thick mane. Of course the African lion is a social species and form groups called prides. These prides usually consist of a few adult males and related females and cubs. Living in these prides makes them more effective when it comes to hunting and they target most of the large animals that can be found in Africa. As some lions live in harsh deserts such as the Kalahari, it can be very hard to get water. These lions not only get moisture from their prey but they also sometimes get their moisture from native melons. If you do live in Africa and you are terrified of lions, it's best to not venture out during storms. Lions enjoy hunting during storms as the noise and the wind makes it harder for their prey to see them and hear them. But if these two big cats were to meet and they battled it out, who would come out victorious? Well the males both reach an average length of around 2 meters excluding the tail and on average the male lions tend to be a little heavier. This doesn't really tell the whole story because Siberian tigers have a larger maximum size and the size of the lion depends on what part of Africa they're from. If a pride of lions were to take on a tiger then the tiger would have no chance. But as Siberian tigers can take down brown bears, I think if it was a one-on-one -on -one battle, the Siberian tiger would come out victorious. So for that reason, I'm scoring it 2-1 for this round. But for our next round, we have two apes in the form of the orangutan and the eastern gorilla. Now there are a few species of orangutan alive today, with the largest being the Bornean orangutan. Orangutans are now mostly only found on the islands of Borneo and Sumatra, and they are the most arboreal of the great apes. They spend the majority of their life in trees, and because of this, they have extremely long arms compared to their bodies. They are the world's heaviest tree-dwelling animals, and once again, the males are very different to the females. Males develop flaps of fatty tissue on both sides of their face, and these make them irresistible to the females. The females, on the other hand, are some of the best mothers in the animal kingdom, and their young stay with them until they are around 7 years old. Orangutans share around 97% of their DNA with us, but this doesn't stop us from treating them so badly. The Bornean orangutan is listed as critically endangered, with deforestation being one of the main reasons behind their decline. Palm oil plantations are a real problem in Southeast Asia, and these monocultures cannot support orangutans. That's why these primates need your help, and like with all the other animals on this list, I've left donation links in the description below. But in Africa, there is also some other fearsome apes, and these apes are called the gorillas. Now, there are two species of gorilla alive today, but the largest species is the eastern gorilla. This gorilla is split into two subspecies, the eastern lowland gorillas and the mountain gorillas. There are only around a thousand mountain gorillas left in the wild, and today they live in two isolated groups. We share around 98% of our DNA with gorillas, which is just slightly more than we do with orangutans. Because of this, they exhibit many similar behaviors to us, and they also share some of our common illnesses. Although all gorillas are powerful, the silverbacks are definitely the most frightening. These are often much larger than the females, and will protect their family viciously. Although they are not usually aggressive towards humans, they will become aggressive if they think their family is threatened. These primates spend a quarter of their day eating, and around 85% of their diet is made up of leaves. They will also take meteor food when available, and will eat rotting wood as it's a source of sodium. This is a very humble diet for such a large creature, and I guess proves you don't have to eat meat to grow big and strong. If these two primates were to meet, I think it only goes one way. The average height of a male orangutan is around 1.4 meters, which is dwarfed by 
by the eastern gorillas 1.7 meters. The average male orangutan is also around 90 kilograms, which is dwarfed by the eastern gorillas 190 kilograms. The eastern gorilla is also a lot more muscular and is a lot more combative. Because of its size and aggression, I think it's an easy winner, and it's 3 1 going into the final round. And our final two species are both the snow leopard and the African leopard. And the snow leopard is native to Central and South Asia and is estimated to have a global population of fewer than 10,000 individuals. It inhabits alpine and subalpine zones, usually at very high altitudes. They are perfectly adapted to these environments, being well insulated from the cold and also having a whitish grey coat that blends in with their environment. In their natural habitat, they feed on other mammals, which often comes in the form of sheep and tar. These prey items can be very hard to catch, but luckily for this leopard it is a perfect ambush predator. But over in Africa there is also another effective ambush predator in the African leopard. Now this species is widely distributed throughout most of sub-Saharan Africa and is found in many segregated populations. Like the jaguars of South America, African leopards also have a black colour morph. This is simply a genetic mutation and this black coat makes them more effective hunting at night. Leopards are solitary and very territorial and within their territories they'll feed on almost anything. They'll even feed on the previously mentioned honey badgers, and sometimes when they've successfully taken down a prey animal, they will drag them up into a tree to be eaten at a later date. If these two big cats were to meet, quite honestly I think it would be a very close match. Snow leopards tend to be a little smaller on average, with the average length of the male not including the tail being 1.5 meters, compared to the African leopards 1.9. Snow leopards also have an average male weight of around 50 kilograms, compared to the African leopards 60. The snow leopard is a lot stockier and more heavily built, but as the African leopard deals with more dangerous creatures in its natural habitat, I think it would win in this round. So overall, it's 4-1 to Africa. Let me know what your scorings would be down in the comments below, and if you have any other locations you want me to do then also let me know down in the comments below. But thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed, if you liked it please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these, but until next time, goodbye. <laughs>